Live Jenna. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. What show, you ask? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, this is a complete and utter Seinfeld show about nothing. And I'm embracing it with open arms. Uh, New York City has once again screwed us with the weather. First show we ever did, it was four degrees. We did the entire show outside. Second show we ever did, it was, uh, it was, it was warm, so I dressed for a warm day, and then it turned four degrees, so I got screwed again. Third show, it rained halfway through the show. We had to run for cover. Fourth show, it's the uh, most humid day in the history of mankind today. Thus the hair. So welcome to Mother Nature's uh, cruel idea of a joke, my hair today. Um, but we're gonna embrace it and we're gonna move forward. This is the show. This right here is the show. Um, I can't wait for you guys to meet some of the people who I will be talking to. They had a great week. Two people on my show got engaged. <clears throat> I, on the other hand, did not get engaged. I spent the better part of my last week and a half at the Denver airport doing, let me think how many things I did. Oh yeah. Nothing, because the like literally the airport has never been shut down. The Denver Airport, Denver International Airport (DIA), never been shut down in the history of oh I don't know the airport. And then uh, and then I came along, and uh, the day before it was uh, 60 degrees. The day after the snowstorm it was 60 degrees, and then the day that I was supposed to fly out it was 30 degrees and bl blizzarding. So I sat in the airport with 5,000 of my now closest friends and did nothing. Every airline was, was, was grounded. Uh, every road in and out of the airport shut down. There was no way in and out of the airport. So at first, um, they weren't even, the, the possibility of leaving the airport wasn't an option. So I was sitting there because I called my mom and my mom, you know, hurry up, run to every Hudson News and buy all the food. Then you're gonna wanna buy blankets. You go where they sell the baggage, make sure you get a pillow and a cot. I was like, I am mortified at the fact that you're even suggesting this. There she was, every time she called, you go get all the food because it's gonna go like crazy. As if like we live in a third world country and they're not gonna somehow have more food. So I, I got a lot of food, I'm not gonna lie. And, uh, and then all of a sudden they make an announcement uh, airport is still closed, but this was after nine hours, right? After nine hours of just sitting there with nowhere to go and nothing to do, they said, we are now opening one small lane of traffic for taxis to leave. People ran outside as if it was like an exodus. Like uh, They want to know which food. Oh, which food? Okay, so I had like three or four different bags of cashews. Sustainable food. Food that could last <laughs> a million years and that had some protein. I had two bags of uh, jerky, turkey jerky. I had four waters. Thank you for that, by the way. What? That jerky thing. Jerky's not a bad food. But jerky is really good. Jerky's good. You want to just, it's got a lot of sodium. So Winchester says that you rock. Oh my God, I love you, Winchester. Uh, wait, this is the best part of the story. Oh, I'm sorry. So all of a sudden, they say one lane of traffic is open, and it's an exodus. Like, did you ever see the Moses movie, where all of a sudden Moses is like, whoa, yeah. and like eight trillion people go flying? That's what happened outside the airport. And I was like, whoa, where are we going? Where are we going? Now, I did my best to try to get up with everyone else, because I had no idea what was happening. Do you want to know what was happening? 686 people got online for taxis. 686. The guy comes out and he goes, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is it's good that you're online. The bad news, we have four taxis. This many. Not 400, not 4,000, four taxis. Did so, you call Uber? Uh, no Uber. You clicked on Uber and it said, Uber will not be, I mean, Uber is no longer functioning. Uber in the entire Denver greater area was down for the count. So I was there for 12 straight hours until the manager's boyfriend of the hotel, oh, all the hotels were closed too. But Stephanie happened to be in Denver for an NBC shoot, so she was already at her hotel, but she couldn't get to me. The manager's boyfriend came after they opened up another lane. This was like three hours later. Um, then I got bronchitis, so I had to go to the hospital that next morning. Yep, everything, my lungs were like filled, I was coughing, I was a mess. Um, and then the next flight they could get me was literally two days later. Then I came home and my kid had pink eye. And then Quinny got a double ear infection. But just so you know, so how was your trip? The overall? trip was amazing. <laughs> so that's basically uh, what what my last 24 hours was. But then I came back and I have these two awesome people that you're gonna meet in a second. And I was like, hey, how are you? And they're like, oh, we just got engaged. And like tears of frustrating happiness was like coming com down my face. These tears of like beautiful, there's such beauty in the world, not on me or anything or anywhere around me right now, but to other people. 
Um, anyway, so that's what's going on. <laughs> and uh, I came back to exactly what I left, which was Trump is still leading, but keeps saying silly things. Ted Cruz can't figure out whether he wants to target Trump or Kasich. Kasich thinks he's got a shot of winning, but mathematically he has no shot. Bernie Sanders is somehow, some way, creeping up on Hillary Clinton and can somehow is now in contention of winning New York, which is sort of Hillary's adopted state, even though it's Bernie's state. But basically, nothing has changed. It's all the same. You, it's like watching Days of Our Lives, right? You can slip out of Days of Our Lives for three years and come back and within eight minutes you're like I, I can't even go to get to the bathroom this commercial break I'm gonna miss something I need to just stay here and keep watching or maybe that was just me um, so that's been uh, that was it but I did get to ski Breckenridge I went I had one 24 hours of skiing I had six hours of skiing the lifts are open from like 8 30 to 4 did you ski or snowboard I skied I skied now why did I ski I grew up in the Caribbean Right when I was like five years old, Did they put skiing, yeah. water skis on me. I didn't know what snow was till I was like twelve, and even then, it was mildly disturbing. And uh, one winter, my parents sent me with a family, I guess friends of theirs, to go ski. And I put two skis on, and it was like the Salvation Army of clothes that I was wearing. Um, and they just stuck random things that they borrowed on me, and I pointed my skis down the mountain, and I went. And that's uh, how I ski right now. So I ski with Steph, and Steph skis like this. Oh yeah, I'm so beautiful, peekaboo street, and all things great and beautiful and cutting and moving and so, and here's me. <laughs> See at the bottom. Do you knock her down? Uh, sometimes I knock her down. Look, you got to do what you got to do when you're out on the slopes. But I did do a, a couple black diamonds, and I was very proud of it. I was on top of the world. I had a little cough. Who knew it would turn into bronchitis? There was a little cloud in the sky. Who knew that would turn into a blizzard? The worst blizzard in the history of mankind. <laughs> Hindsight, but for those seven hours that I was on the mountain, life was good. Anyway, so now here I am, and it's like as muggy as muggy could be. The birds all have afros. They're like, <laughs> what's going on today? Um, but we are out here, and we are wearing short sleeves. Tomorrow it's going to be 30 degrees. There is a polar bear. I, t I say this every week. There's a polar bear right now that's like writing a suicide note because <laughs> polar bear is like, it's not working for me. I have nothing to eat. People are using hairspray way too often. The aerosol kinds. Uh, I think this is my last day on the planet. Iceberg? No, not iceberg. Mirage. It's a mirage. Got to go by. That's basically what's happening in the world. As we sit here in short sleeves, because tomorrow we're going to be wearing winter coats again. Uh, anyway, so this first segment of the show was supposed to be the news segment, and all I did was like bitch and complain a little bit about what the last. Uh, well, the news is uplifting like. these days. Yeah, the news is good. Get good news. Uh, any comments for anyone? Um, there were. They wanted to know how the show is similar to Jimmy Kimmel's show. Oh, I'll tell you exactly how it's similar. <laughs> so here's Jimmy Kimmel's show, and um, and uh, and here's my show. <laughs> Just so you know. So this is Jimmy Kimmel's show, and these are other cool shows like that. And then uh, you see this guy over here. This guy knows this guy, which is my show. <laughs> That's my show right over here. That's how it's exactly just like Jimmy Kimmel. Now, I will tell you a great Jimmy Kimmel story. I was at a Dodgers Mets playoffs game uh, eight years back. Who is Jimmy Kimmel, by the way? Jimmy Kimmel is the host of the ABC Late Night Show. Oh yeah, Jimmy yeah, Kimmel. I've heard of him. Listen, I'm at the sh I'm at the game, hey. right? I was working for WABC Channel Seven. I'm sitting down. I'm in the media press box, and who's sitting next to me? Jimmy Kimmel. So, this you know, this, this was eight years ago when I had cojones, and I looked at him, I said, listen, you don't know me from Adam. I'm doing a live shot at 11 o'clock. Obviously, I can't show highlights of the game. The game is still going on. Do you want to leave Dodger Stadium with me, come outside where you're probably not going to get back in because they're crazy with security, and be on my show for the three minutes that I'm on? Narrowed down to one minute, which will probably be 30 seconds because that's all the time they ever give me. And of course, I was ready for the retort to him saying no, and he's like, Yeah, let's do it. Love you. So he came on my show, and uh, I said, Hey guys, you know, welcome to New York. Like, the game's going on, but look who I was sitting next to. And it's not even two seconds that Jimmy Kimmel's come into frame. People, humans I've never seen before. It was like the like the, the thriller video. They came up from places unbeknownst to me. And I gotta show you a video, it's probably on YouTube. And all of a sudden you see me standing here and a swarm of a crowd went home. I literally got thrown out of the shot. Jimmy Kimmel spoke for a minute and a half about I don't know what. I don't need, I, I mean, eventually I came up, I looked like Cookie Monster. There was like hair coming down, like my mascara was like down here. I was like, how? Oh, I gotta go by got thrown away. Anyway, he was like, oh, that was fantastic. And he showed it on his show the next night. 
<laughs> and then I kept in touch with him for a while, and then I got a job at the Today Show, and that you was weren't allowed to be in touch with him when you were on the Today Show. I was, and I did uh, email him every once in a while, but he's since become big and famous, and I'm doing the General Show. <laughs> All right, which is awesome. That is my Jimmy Kimmel story. Cool. Yes. Um, so that's basically that's what all the came news. Down to. But I will tell you that throughout all of it, I managed to still, while I was sick and everything, work out, get a little workout going. So for all you, is it a good idea there, to work out when you're sick? So they say it is a good idea. <clears throat> they, Why? Because it opens your lungs up and it gets your blood flowing. And sometimes just sitting in one stationary spot, not feeling well leads to more of this not feeling well. Uh, look, I don't want you to raise your heart rate. I don't want you to break a, too bad of a sweat. I'd love you to get on the treadmill and just move a little bit. Just get yourself into a nice little breathing pattern. Uh, I, on the other hand, do not subscribe to that. It's like all or nothing for me. So I, uh, I did work out. But my point was motivated myself to do it. So if I can motivate myself to get moving while I have severe bronchitis and am on steroid medication and antibiotics, uh, you who don't have you, you who don't have the, the the bronchitis you you must get up and you have to go do something It's <laughs> are you contagious? Am I contagious? No <laughs> <laughs> I'm not contagious. Uh, no, not contagious. It's been it's been a couple days We're good to go. That's that being crazy. said, I think you should all all of you guys everyone in the audience <laughs> you Should all wear face masks you in the back 17 rows deck you should wear a face There's so many people here. You can't Guys, keep so, it down. I'm trying to do my show. Um, <laughs> this is my show. So. Um, the shoes. People like the shoes. Who my, makes their shoes? My shoes? Yeah. Oh, you can see my shoes look in the at, show? Look at that. You're sartorially resplendent. I don't even know what those two words were. <laughs> um, I'm no sartoriously idea. susplendent? <laughs> Sartori sartorial. Sart it's nefarious of you to even bring that word up. <laughs> These are my Pumas. I have them in a few different colors. They are the most wonderful kicks in the world. Second only to my actual practical running shoes. Uh, so these you don't are, work out on those? These are will not work fashion. out in these shoes. These are for fashion. I'm very, very, I am to, to workout sneakers what Kim Kardashian, Amelda Marcos was to like real shoes. Oh, wow. Hey! How many, I know who Amelda Marcos is. You should is. know. I didn't know the uh, Jimmy Kimmel reference. Oh, okay. But, um, um, Amelda Marcos had like 7,000 pair of shoes. I am that way. With, I love my sneakers. I, I, I could I, never I, have enough sneakers. How many sneakers do you have? I probably. Well, I just gave 12 pair of sneakers away to, um, there, some of them were new, to uh, homeless shelters and Salvation Army. I give my sneakers away, but I love my sneakers. You ever want to make me happy, send me a pair of sneakers. We and I like dull colors. I don't like crazy colors. We should, we should do a segment from your closet. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Comma, three hours after I clean it up. Clean it up. Okay. Or maybe just have your sneakers bring them all out here. I can do that. I'll bring my sneakers out. But I have to now replenish because I just gave so many away. So I probably have eight pair now. Actually, I have a serious question. Is yoga good for a, is yoga good for a herniated disc? I don't like to address injuries because I don't know the extent of what your situation is. So that is up to your doctor to tell you. If you are in a rehab situation, um, I would not do many twisting type poses. I would always be cautious of that. But that again, you, I would leave that up to your doctor. I don't like answering injury type questions because I never get the full story. So I can never give you the full story in return. That being said, I can answer any other workout question you may have, or diet question, or fitness question, or any of those whatsoever. Yeah. Good deal. All right, okay. so we're going to be back in two minutes with your first guest. Let's do it. That was a solid first segment. Thanks for watching, you guys. This is going to be a fun first guest. You know why? A, I can't pronounce his name. B, he's so ridiculously cool that his accent actually kind of turns me on. It's very Mission Impossible-esque. Uh, and number three, he won an award that I've never heard of, but if you have heard of it, you're gonna be beyond impressed. And if that doesn't get you to stick around, I don't know what will. We're back after this.